Old Replay number one. Hey guys, it's Savage20 here bringing you a old 2v2 replay that Ship actually sent me. It's me right here and Ship over here on the other part of the map. We're partners, we're allies together in the fight versus Wolf over here and Z who represent the enemies uh, on the wonderful map of Province with this big hill smack dab in the middle that offers great sight lines into both the flat, flat uh, flatter part of the map that ship is occupying over here that we're looking at and also the forest on my side of the map which has lots of trees and by extension lots of cover for your units now over here there's a ridge line on the right and over here in my spawn there is a big hill that i s sit on and spawn on uh throughout the map uh over here on the flatlands, you see it's chip uh, that's relatively flat over there. And here we go. The game is starting. So the first thing that Z and I are going to do, uh, first I'm going to look at Z's army and notice that he actually has four Grenzers all stacked on his right side, uh, his center right, my center left. And he's going to be rushing towards the forest with his Grenzers. And me, I realize that the uh, forest is an important part of the map, and I run up there to try to contest it. But looking back... Uh, I had to realize that uh, fighting up against four Grenzers, which for those of you for uh, for those of you who don't know, they are double-barreled uh, rifle units. They have 90 range and they shoot these double-barreled guns. So they pretty much shoot <laughs> long-range shotguns, and they pretty much decimate any unit that they you know take a volley at. So with that in mind, uh, I just take a pot shot with my militia that I was originally going to use to contest the forest, and I just pull out. Because I don't want anything to do with those uh, anything to do with those Grenzers. So there you there you see I'm just running home, running back to my spawn in in pride and bravery. So over here, Chip is pushing up the left. He's got goons on the left, and he's got Fergusons on the left too. Uh, Fergusons are very good units, uh, as I've mentioned in previous videos. They shoot extremely fast because they have extremely fast reload times, but they have low ammo and their melee stats are abysmal and they will die immediately if you charge them. Uh, so here back on my side of the map you can see that Z is pretty much taking control of the forest over here. Wolf over here, <laughs> he's planted six on the hill in the middle with his Ferguson Rifleman. So Chip sees this and he sees that the enemy side has kind of grabbed control of the middle features of the map. So he's going to naturally be pushing the flanks because he doesn't want to fight in an uphill battle quite literally literally. So he's going to push up his Fergs on the far left. Uh, he's going to suffer some losses because he took the first volley, but he's going to return some fire and he's going to make up for the losses by killing uh, quite a few of his line and green jackets. Uh, so here I'm just kind of moving up my green jackets on the very right to try to get some pot shots at his line. I don't want to commit to anything yet. I'm just kind of waiting there to see what Z will do. Uh, so here back again, uh, Chip is still taking shots. Uh, one th important thing to note in this battle is that the rules were no artillery, maximum six lights. Um, three players, they all brought six lights, me, uh, Z, and Wolf. We all maxed out on the number of rifles we could bring. However, Chip, either because he's an, he's an idiot or because he wants to prove something, I don't know, he only brought five riflemen. So... That'll be a shame, especially over here as Wolf has just pushed up his Fergusons, uh, one of them being the extra rifle that Wolf has, onto the center hill. Uh, so, oh, back over here on my side, it's Great Britain versus Austria. Uh, once again, I'm just kind of sitting still. Uh, that's because in a Great Britain versus Austria fight, uh, Great Britain cannot handle Austria in a close close range engagement so that's why I'm sitting back and just kind of letting the fight come to me uh, my strategy this game is kind of just to take some shots then run away to kind of skirmish him to death from long range because I just can't afford to do that uh, one important thing to note over here is that uh, Wolf is actually kind of up on a hill and if we try to attack it it won't work well at all so he kind of has this position of dominance. However, even if he, as he's taking shots into our units with these extremely great Ferguson riflemen, bam, they, there, there they go, they're kind of shooting into the forest, which means that A, they're shooting into trees, which block bullets, B, they have decreased accuracy, and C, that means, by extension, uh, our troops aren't taking that many losses. So he's kind of wasting the ammo of a very expensive unit, uh, not really getting too much out of it, except for maybe just a handful of losses. So that's not a great use of his Ferguson's by Wolf. Um, over here on Chip's side of the map, 
Uh, he's just kind of skirmishing over here. He's moving up militia, moving up goons, uh, trying to poke some holes into uh, into Wolf's formation, try to take some pot shots and weaken some units before he goes into anything too drastic. Uh, one of Wolf's characteristics in the way he plays is that he's very liberal in his use of goons. Uh, he'll run them up to contest anything, so that's why Chip is trying to induce Wolf to make a mistake and just run his goons up so he can shoot back. Um, here you can see that Z has established solid control of the forest, and that's something very bad for me, so that's why I just keep pulling back, because I don't want to engage in the forest. Uh, here he's continuing to shoot at the militia, and he's continuing to shoot into the forest. So he's just wasting the ammo of an expensive unit once again on A, a poor unit, and C, shooting into something that's heavily covered, and he's just wasting his ammo. Uh, you can see that I've kind of formed this bowl shape with my rifle line. Uh, this is because if he comes out of the forest, I'll mow him down. Here I push out my green jackets. You can see I just uncovered his Windbush Jaegers, which came, out of, which came out of hiding. Now, those guys are extremely dangerous and are something that I do need to take account of because they can pretty much destroy one of my rifle, one of my rifle units pretty quickly. They're on par with Ferguson's as the best you know, 125 range rifleman in the game. And so here we go. Uh, Chip is continuing to run up his goon units. Uh, you can see over here on the center left that Wolf is responding in kind by moving up his goons, as you can see right there, to try to return the fire. And Chip, seeing this, moves up his other goons too to reciprocate and to try to intercept and try to get the volleys off on Wolf's light dragoons. Now, this is a battle that will go pretty well for Chip because he has much more units in the area to support. Um, over here you can see the green jackets are still being shot at. They're not taking too many losses, especially considering the fact that they've been being shot at for a good like solid 3-4 minutes by those Ferguson riflemen. Uh, Chip over here, he's turned his goons to shoot into the flanks of Wolf's goons, as you can see. But Wolf right here has launched a charge at these Ferguson riflemen. Now this could be extremely dangerous for Chip. Uh, he's the Graper in outlining green, Wolf is the one outlined in red. That it's extremely dangerous for Chip because Ferguson's die almost immediately in melee. So Chip, almost immediately, he turns around his goons to take some shots at the charging goons. Uh, although it does kill the goon, uh, Chip's Ferguson riflemen have suffered, like, pretty much, um, they've lost about half their unit just off of that one charge. So back on my side of the map, you can see that Z is pushing up with his units. Uh, his Grenzers got too close, so I kind of sacrificed the militia because I'd rather he shoot my militia than <laughs> shoot my rifles. Uh, so I'm just keeping... I'm continuing my pullback along the hill. Uh, my green jackets are engaging his Windbush Jaegers, which is a looking back is a fight that I should not have taken because obviously a Windbush Jaeger will destroy a green jacket hands down 10 out of 10 times. So I'm pretty much going to lose that, lose that unit right here. Uh, back on Chip's side with Wolf, Wolf in the red, Great Britain flag, um, Chip in the green. Uh, Chip has kind of destroyed Wolf's goons that he ran up, up the center. And so that kind of left this big gap in the middle. So as a result, Wolf was like, oh crap. So he pushes somewhere else. He pushes in the middle with his first rifleman. So he gets up closer. Uh, back over here on my side of the map, I'm just continuing my pullback. I don't want to get too close. Uh, but eventually I do have to fight him because there is an end to the map. So I'm just kind of being annoying right here. I'm just running up a hill with a little girl. Um, I'm sending some goons over here to try to shoot down those uh, Windbouche Jaegers. Um, either by meleeing them or by shooting them. So those goons shoot. Uh, seeing an opening over here, I want to try to charge it with my goon. But that goon will die because it's unsupported. My reasoning at the time was I thought that these riflemen up on the hill would pro uh, provide enough uh, covering fire to uh, kind of deal some damage while the uh, goons were, you know, holding, pinning down his forces. But, you know, hindsight is 2020 at the time that didn't work, whatever. So... He finally killed that unit <laughs> after wasting maybe a, mo the majority of those Ferguson Riflemen's uh, ammo. Oh, Chip over here, he's killed a good portion of Wolf's troops, so Wolf is retreating to try to consolidate his troops. Um, over here, I, I see this, so I'm like, hey, if I can just hold up long enough and not get in a close range fight with Austria, Chip will beat Wolf and come over here and help me. And that's something that's especially important in a 2v2 or any time of kind of team game or even in just like Empire Total War in general, is being situationally aware. So basically what this means is that uh, if there's a fight that you can take, if there's an engagement that you have the potential to get yourselves in, but that engagement is not beneficial to you. So if there's an engagement that you're, pr you're probably going to lose, obviously that's not an engagement you want to, you know, get yourself in. So 
you know, kiting back and running away is not shameful when the alternative is certain death. And the second thing, which is more prevalent to this battle, is the fact that when you see that your ally is winning a 2v2, uh, don't do anything stupid and just, you know, suicide charge your units, because if you get destroyed by your opponent, then you're going to pretty much, like, counteract and undermine all the work that your partner did to defeat his. So what I'm doing, I'm just kind of holding a line here. I'm holding Austria back on this hill. Uh, I'm making, trying my best not to suffer too many losses, which is rather hard to do considering Z player is a very good player, uh, probably one of the best terrain players to ever play Empire Total War. But uh, I'm just trying my best to uh, hold out over here. Uh, I'm up the hill, I'm shooting at these troops uh, in the hopes that uh, if I survive long enough, that Chip will make his way over to my flank and help me out by smacking Z in the behind. So I'm just, I'm just on the hill here, I'm continuing to file out to kite back. I don't want to get in any close range engagements with his Grenzers once again, so I'm just kind of doing my best over here. Uh, Z is being very liberal with his goons. He's trying to charge into my Ferguson's. <laughs> Look at this line of dead soldiers over here. Brutal. It's a result of his Grenzers and his Windbush Jaegers. Uh, so over here, I just charged this line. I'm trying to get my units behind and try to ca cause some havoc, but Z just immediately shuts my uh, efforts down, sadly. So over here... I have all my rifles in this big blob, which is kind of dangerous considering that I only have a couple goon units nearby to protect them. So I should be laying down stakes. Uh, I think I did with one unit, but I should be laying down stakes with all of them so they don't get charged by their goons. And so here, you can notice that I've pretty much kited all the way to the top of my hill because I don't want to engage close range. Uh, here, you see I charged into his lights, and you can see that <laughs> Chip's units are starting to come to the rescue. He's come. And at this point, it's pretty much GG, because Chip beat Wolf pretty soundly, even though Chip was down one uh, rifle unit, which is actually a pretty big advantage in competitive Empire Total War play at this level. And so Chip, you know, he pulled it off, he beat Wolf, and as a result, he was able to help me, a teammate who was, you know, kind of struggling to do anything against Z. He was just kind of running up a hill, and I was kind of running back even farther up a hill, you know, waiting for my teammate to come save me. So over here in the forest, you know, we're just kind of cleaning things up. Uh, I want to say thank you to every uh, player that participated in this battle because each one of them is elite and terrific and great in their own regard. Uh, so the battle's finishing up over here. Um, when the end screen pops up, the first name should say Chip, uh, GG and GN, except, you know, it kind of glitched out because he sent me the replay, so instead it'll say my name, as you can see here. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time.